in this video, I'm going to walk you through my strategy for determining the isoelectric point of a polypeptide. As you may recall from chapter four, the isoelectric point is the pH at which a molecule carries a net zero charge. For a number of molecules, this is pretty straightforward if you only have two pKa's. The equation that you use is pi is equal to pKa1 plus pKa2 divided by two. However, for polypeptides, we often have multiple ionizable groups and more than two pKa's. So the trick for determining the isoelectric point is then determining which two pKa's we need to use for our calculation. I can break this down into four easy steps for you. Step one, determine how many ionizable groups you have in your molecule. If you have four ionizable groups, you then move on to step two. Step two is you're gonna sketch out a rough titration curve, and you're gonna plot out each pKa from lowest pH to highest pH as plateaus on your titration curve. In step three, you're then gonna mentally titrate your polypeptide starting at the most acidic, fully protonated group. So let's say we have a plus two. Then you're gonna walk yourself up each step, each pKa at a time, losing a charge. Then at that point, you're gonna take a step back in step four and determine which two, between which two pKa's did you have a net zero charge. Then these are the two pKa's that you use in your calculation. So let's walk through an example problem, shall we? So for example, let's use this polypeptide. We have the N-terminus, proline, leucine, arginine, serine, lysine, and our C-terminus. Remember, in step one, is we need to first identify all of the ionizable groups that we have and identify their pKa's. So obviously, we have our C-terminus and our N-terminus both of which have ionizable groups. The C-terminus pKa is effectively 2.0. Our N-terminus has a pKa of approximately 9.0. The next thing we need to do is look at the R groups of the amino acids in the polypeptide and ask ourselves whether or not they have ionizable groups. So remember, any of our polar and nonpolar amino acids, such as proline, leucine, and serine, do not have ionizable groups. The only groups that have ionizable R groups are gonna be our acidic or our basic amino acids, such as arginine and lysine. The pKa for the R group in arginine is going to be 12.5, while the pKa for lysine is effectively 10.5. So now for step two, we are going to sketch and rank these pKa's in increasing order from acidic to basic. So we have four ionizable groups, so we should have four plateaus. So if we have increasing hydroxide and pH on this side, our first most acidic pKa is that C-terminus, which is a pH of 2.0. Our next pKa is that N-terminus, which is 9.0, followed by lysine, which is 10.5, and finally arginine, which is 12.5. And then if we kind of fill in our titration curve like so, we'll get something like this, okay? So now the next step, step three, is to sort of mentally titrate our polypeptide in order to determine the charge state below and above each of the pKa's. So to do that, I'm gonna start very acidic where everything should be protonated. If everything is protonated, the C terminus has a hydrogen on it that gives it a neutral charge. Lysine's hydrogen is gonna give lysine a positive charge. Arginine's 
hydrogen is going to give arginine a positive charge, and then the amino terminus hydrogen is also going to give us a positive charge. So overall, at the lowest pH, we will have three positive charges on our basic residues and then a neutral charge on our one acidic residue, giving us an overall plus three charge. As we start to titrate adding hydroxide, what happens when we get above the first pKa, that pKa of the carboxylic acid, is we will lose that hydrogen and we will gain a one minus charge, giving us an overall negative one, plus one, plus one, plus one, an overall plus two charge. As we continue to titrate above the pKa of that amino terminus, we will lose that proton, giving us a neutral charge on the amino terminus. However, we still have two positive charges and one negative charge, meaning we have an overall plus one charge when we get above the pKa of the N terminus. Again, we continue to titrate to get to the pKa of lysine. As we go above the pH of lysine and we lose that proton on lysine, we get another neutral zero charge on lysine, giving us one minus on the carboxylic acid, one plus on arginine, giving us a net zero charge between the two pKa's. As we continue to titrate above the pKa of arginine, we'll finally lose that last proton so that we're neutral on the N terminus, neutral on arginine, neutral on lysine, one minus on carboxylic acid, giving us a negative one charge at pHs above arginine's pKa. Now step four is to take a step back and look at your titration curve and identify where that zero charge occurs and identify the two pKa's that bracket either side of that zero charge. So in our example, that's gonna be the pKa for lysine which is 10.5, and the pKa for arginine, which is 12.5. These are the two pKa's that we're gonna use in our calculation for PI. So remember, the PI is equal to pKa1 plus pKa2 over two. So for our example, PI is gonna be equal to 10.5 plus 12.5 over 2, and if we plug and chug, we should come up to an answer of 11.5. You can even check your answer using Thermo Fisher's Polypeptide Analyzer. Follow the link here, and it will take you to a website where you can put in the amino acid sequence, click Analyze, and you can scroll down to see what the PI is. Let's practice some other um, sequences here. Again, you can check your answer using that Thermo Fisher polypeptide analyzer. You can also make your own sequences for additional practice and check your answer through that as well. All right, I'll see you guys next time in class.